Music. Hello again and welcome to Crime and Music. I'm your host, Brian J. Kinsley, and with me as always, my friend Ben Rufo. Hi today, Brian. Hi today, Ben. Hi, everyone out there in podcast world. If you've never joined us before, we're a true crime podcast about people in and around the music business. Every other Wednesday, we'll bring you a brand new story about some crazy broad dude, non-binary person who was musically famous to some degree, went off the rails, and we got a story to tell. Yeah, I'm excited. And when I said hi today, I meant I'm high today. Yeah. Uh, yeah no, high I'm on not. life, John Denver. <laughs> I'm right in front of Congress. I'm high. I'm high right now. What are you going to do? I'm high on life. Hey, it's Michigan. We can do that now, right? Uh, recreationally, legal marijuana is legal in Michigan. Legal marijuana is legal in Michigan. That's generally how the laws are written. All so right. If you guys like these sort of things, not the legal marijuana, I don't know. Whatever maybe, you maybe. like. Maybe. Send us a line at any of the social medias, at Crime and Music, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and if you're old... I'm just <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was a shot. Brian. I'm just kidding. No, the demographics prove out. Instagrams for the young kids. There's stuff I don't even know about, like the Snapchats and all that, that are younger than that. And then hey, there's people a new, there's, our age are Facebookers. <laughs> there's a new one that kids are smuggling onto their phones oh called Find a Stranger. What? <laughs> why would you? Would, why? That's a thing. <laughs> then kids are like hiding it and <laughs> find a stranger. Wow. To quote my wife, we don't know any strangers. <laughs> so it's been a minute since uh we've seen each other we do this all the time um i hope we have the perception we hang out constantly but we don't i see it like maybe two three times a month oh it's been a struggle it's it, yes it's between just life and this michigan weather we have so i know that everybody's not up to date but we're it's we're in we're in february right now correct and we've had some snow and ice situations going on here in michigan which we're used to dealing with but this year's been a little trying polar vortex it was a triple polar vortex too apparently there were like last year i remember the big huge basically a polar vortex is a frozen wind hurricane why didn't we call it el vortexo (laughs) i don't know i thought we named things like that's true they should have names right like the vortex should have had a name well all right i got some names for you today because we're back uh and we got some cool stories to talk about and as you guys know, if you've been uh, listening before, thank you so much for listening to us now. I do want to put out a quick reminder. I did say a thing about my wife, and she's like, hey, just let them know that you guys aren't making fun of the victims of these crimes. You're not making fun of their families and things like that. You're making fun of super rich people who seemingly had it all and then decided to screw it up. Those are the people we're making fun of. We're not trying to be insensitive to, to crime victims of any regard. No, we, we don't try to be insensitive. We are naturally sometimes insensitive It'll people. It'll happen. And we'll apologize for that <laughs> as they come. So thank you, Alicia, for helping us see our nasty ways. I'm, I'm just a man. That's, uh, I'm, and she's your wife, so yeah, well, that's her job. Make, make me feel better. Nailed it. So this week, uh, you guys ready? Oh, one more thing, an update. Um, do hit us up on the social medias, but on our own website, crimeandmusic.com, we've told you about SpeakPipe a hundred times. I took the limits off, buddy. There's no training wheels. I don't need your email. I don't need your name. You are free to go there and record whatever you want. <laughs> if you would, please record an entire episode for us so we could put it out there and make our lives easier. That would be a hey, lot better. And could just do a crime and music on SpeakPipe. If you'd like to do your own crime and music on SpeakPipe, <laughs> hit us up. Crimeandmusic.com. We won't edit it or nothing. No. <laughs> like play. Yeah. Job done. Thanks, guys. <laughs> All right. This week, you ready? Yeah, yeah. This is what, this is the, this is my part. This I, is your, your favorite we part. We got a little we got a little music, I think. Yeah, we, we did. Brian's hitting, getting ready to hit buttons. I did. We know buttons are sometimes difficult. Buttons can be difficult. Sometimes. But now he's hitting more buttons. Watch this. All right, we got we're doing things. Buttons, buttons. I got it. Nail Here we it. go, people. Ah, there it is. We all know what this means. Time for me to blank out on everything I know about music, which isn't a lot. All right, man, we got some nicknames for you today. All right, nicknames. I get to try to guess the guest. Guess the guest. Guess the guest. Grieven. Grieven? Grieven. Like like sad? G-R-E-V-E-N, like grieven. I'm playing a video game where there's a guy walking around yelling for Gavin the whole time, looking for his friend Kit Craig. I don't think that's what that says. Gavin! Yeah. Did you know that? No, it's a bit about a guy called Larry. Larry! Larry, where you at, man? Oh, okay, no. Anyway, Gavin. Okay, no, no, Gr- Gavin. Grieven. Got it. Grieven. All right, nope. Uh, ooh, Count Grishnak. Count Grishnak. Count Grishnak. 
Now that was in a couple movies you should probably recognize. No. That. No? No, you have to tell me what movies though afterwards. Uh, oh, we'll get there. All right. <clears throat> His legal name is Louis Cachet. Good old Louis C. Louis um, C. No, well, that's a whole other guy. Louis. Louis Cachet. Cachet. I'll even tell you, it's French. Oh, Cachet. I thought we weren't doing French people, Brian. I he's, thought that was a rule. He's not French. We'll get there. We'll I thought that there. was one of our first rules. Name your favorite French guitarist. Your time's running down, buddy. Yeah, I, I, I don't think I know this one. No, I don't think you do no, either. I, not, nothing there is nothing. Grieven. Count Grishnak, Louis Cachet are all the names for Varg Verkins. I still don't know, Brian. Varg Verkins <laughs> is, uh, he's he's a Norwegian uh, black metal rocker. Oh, what they call okay. It, so. we, okay. All right. right. When, when, when Brian and I first started this venture into the crime of music, we knew there were some um, Swedish black metal craziness. Norwegian. 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 What, is that a Sweden and Norwegian not the same? Two different places. What about like Danish? North, and, North and South Dakota. The Danes. <laughs> two different like two different places. <laughs> um, I you know Denmark are the Dane Danes. Aren't they the people. Swedish Denmark Finnish? Those are all Norwegian. All right, somebody's buying. Somebody buy me a map, please. We do have two Norwegian listeners. So Aren't they right hi there guys. north of like Germany and shit? That's correct. They uh, go through the Baltic. Oh shit! I didn't even think about doing Norway as far as like a history of Norway. <laughs> right, that's where the Baltic yes. is, and um, um, Belgium's right in Norway that area. and all those places. You're you're like nailing it. Poland's it's the Scandinavian the countries, east of uh, England and yeah. sort of middle Europe kind of thing. But before you get to Russia, yeah, I think okay. I, I Norway. Think I we got a guy, guy uh, a guy named Varg. Varg. Varg Verkins. Varg Verkins. Uh, February 11th, 1973, he was born in... February 11th. That's my <laughs> Swedish accent. He was actually born Christian Vergnes. Verg, ver, Vergnes. <laughs> Varg. V-I-K-E-R-N-E-S. Vergnes. All right. Uh, in, Bergen, in Bergen, Norway. Bergen? He, he's Norwegian. All right. Yeah. All right. Nor, nor, Norway. I'm going to call him Varg. Varg. Let's go Varg. with Varg. Varg. Yeah, Varg means wolf in Norwegian. Okay. So uh, his mom, Helen Bohr, they call her Len. She's boring. And then his dad, um, name omitted, and we'll we'll get there. Name omitted. <laughs> like, is that his full name? Uh, no. <laughs> his birth certificate? No, no, no. When, he, when you look, it's a black line of marker like, we, we, nope, you don't get to know who that is. Hey, just sorry, and this is not a long story. So I see there's a thing on uh, uh, the longest name in the world. This, oh. this I just saw this the other day come up. I think they're this lady and her daughter, who the daughter had the longest name in the world. She's like 15 years old daughter. Mm-hmm. Her birth certificate, Brian, and my feet are now like three feet apart, was this long. He she had like with his feet, guys. 400 names what? in her name. Why? She's Guinness Book, just, just just to be in the Guinness Book World Records. I don't like that. And and if that little girl didn't rattle off the entire oh, she knew length her of her name, and and not only was her first name a million words long, her middle name was like a oh. million words long. <laughs> she's she's gonna have beautiful handwriting. Well, I mean, I think they just they just <laughs> call her Tay. Write it out. Tay, hey Tay. What All right. up? All right, we're back into Verg. I just saw that. That was crazy. <laughs> that is interesting. I don't think it was that mean. I mean, they're all made up names too, kind of. I mean, you know me in last names, so I can't get into it as much as I'd like to. But I sat next to a girl in typing class in high school with the longest name. It was like. 28 letters because it's a, their family history was like you would add a letter to the family name when you started your version of the family tree or whatever that's kind of neat her cousin had one extra letter but i didn't know her so it was just down. We, what up dom i had a buddy yes well, i can't I can't say can i say just his last name however you refer to him if he's long as he's not identifiably full by yeah a, his n- his long his name was schmidt 15 letters wow that was a long name to, for them to put on the back of a baseball jersey it went right, right from like one kidney up over his shoulders, back down to his other kidney. I mean, coming, coming back around your your tricep there yeah. on the sleeve. You're like, you need to wear long sleeves there. <laughs> All right. Let me tell you about Bergen, Norway, since we are getting into Norway in the in the Norwegian black metal scene. Uh, Bergen, Bergen, it's a city and a municipality in Hordaland on the west coast <laughs> Wh- of Norway. where Hordaland. Oh, I said Horland. I'm like, <laughs> no, I'm book a ticket. You know, I mean, back in the day with the Vikings, there might have been a Horland. Horland. Y'all want to stop at Horland? Hell yeah, I want to stop at Horland. What kind of, what kind of mascots do they I have? I'll go to get Burgerland next. <laughs> go to Barland. I want to do something with it's a small world, but my brain's stuck on Horland. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Horland after all. Uh, Bergen is the second largest city in Norway. 
Uh, Oslo is number one. Uh, there's about... Bergen's the second largest city now? Yeah, currently. There's about 700,000 people in about 180 square miles. Nor- Norway is the largest. And then Bergen? No, Oslo is the largest city. In, in Norway. In, Nor- in Norway. Yes. And then Bergen. So we're talking like the second biggest oh, I guess, city. I just never heard of Bergen. I guess yeah, I'm no. not... not Forgive me, all of our European listeners. Uh, Bergen is known as the city of seven mountains. It's an international center, uh, center for agriculture, shipping, and offshore oil. Hey, where is that one thing that they lift the boats up on that big wheel thing? You oh, yeah, yeah. The, they, like, the, they, they put a boat in a trough, and somehow it rotates around. It's rotates like their lock and, system. And it shoves them up into another funnel of... I think that's either Sweden or Norway. You're right. There's like a, a rotating lock. I bet it's in Bergen. Not like a door lock but like a can can water we, lock can we just say it's in bergen i'll say it's in bergen okay bergen has a beautiful lock system fellas you, and, and ladies you guys should check that out <laughs> we just said it we did <clears throat> no bergen actually is very interesting for being a well i'll let you put together the facts fire fire yes the studio is not on fire but bergen is known for fires the city has a history of huge fires you ready for fi- like catching on fire catching on fire <clears throat> 1198 uh, the Bangalore faction, it's its a party, like a political party, set fire to the city. What year? 1198. Oh, 1198. Yeah, back in the day. This is going to be a lot more sort of early European history. They have an older history than what we may be used Pretty to much. in the Americas. <laughs> Pretty well, much. at least. A couple hundred years. <laughs> at least us whites here in the Americas. So, uh, 1248, Holman, it's a, vid- a village, and Sversborg, um, that's a fort. Uh, like the resistance fort they built back then. That, that burned down, and 11 churches On were purpose? destroyed. On purpose? Uh, it just burned down. If I don't know you why, don't yeah. use the word sack here somewhere, Brian, uh-huh. as like they came in and sacked the city. Ah. Yeah. Eh, I like that word. We'll get there. That's one of my, like, I like that English version of that word. Not like sack. Like I got a sack of 14, kittens. are you ready? 1413, another fire in the city and 14 churches are destroyed. Huh. Uh, 1428, the city is plundered. And sacked. Did you really use did, was that? Did you write down sacked on no, there? Not oh. at all. All right. Well, you had to use it. <laughs> right. Uh, it, the city was sacked by the Victual Brothers. They're pirates from the North and Baltic Seas. Okay. Uh, 1455, a uh, merchant guide burnt down Munkalini Abbey. That's like the oldest and, and wealthiest abbey in okay. Norway. So that's gone. 1476, Briergen, not Bergen, <laughs> Briergen. Burned down. Uh, it's also uh, known as Teixbregenjenen. Uh, it's a shopping district by the harbor, basically, like a commercial center. And I, fire was started by a drunk trader. Not not traitor, but a trader, like a guy trading goods. He like got for drunk pelts and, for right. more booze. Uh, Ms. O'Leary's cow kicked over the lamp, burned down Chicago. It's one of those things. He got huh. drunk and burned it down. 1476. <laughs> hey, who hasn't been there one night or two? <laughs> 1582, uh, fire hits the city center. Streisdind. I'm going to refer to it as Streisand because that's all I could think of. Um, Streisand is kind of like Jersey Shore meets Manhattan. It's the beachside and the boardwalk and all that. Hmm. Burn down. These people need to invest in a little asbestos. Buttons not and a lot words. of Not Buttons a lot of volunteers at the fire department. <laughs> Nobody want to put out fires in Bergen? 1675, 105 buildings burned down. Jesus, C. 1686, uh, a great fire hits Streisand again, Barbara. Uh, 231 city blocks and... 218 houseboats burn. Oh, poor people. They're houseboats. Well, I guess they probably live on them. Put a Craigslist ass for some bad firemen. Just anybody want to <laughs> sit on the weekend? 1702, 90% of the city of Bergen is burned to ash. These people, what do they do with, I mean, they keep building, I don't know, whatever. Fires happen. I get it. You guys don't have any stones. <laughs> <laughs> we have all these trees. They do have a lot of, yeah, they have a lot of trees there. They, I know, still do a lot of heating with fire. For people's like primary heat source over there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Seventeen fifty one fire, seventeen fifty six fire. Streisand again. Fifteen hundred buildings burned down. Seventeen seventy one fire. Streisand. Nineteen oh one. They get a hundred year break here for a minute. Fire. Streisand. Jeez. Nineteen sixteen city center and three hundred buildings burned down. April 9th, ninth, nineteen forty. The first day of World War II. Now, they probably didn't know that then, but Germany invades and occupies. 
kind of, you know. Yeah, they, they got occupied by the, well, yeah, they're like next right. door neighbors. So, not a bad day. I'm sure there was some fire. <laughs> 1944, Dutch cargo ship Verbode, loaded with over 120 tons of explosives, explodes, kills 150 people, and buildings are burned and destroyed. Hey, you want to just hear, you said boat, and I think we had, the Titanic was kind of helped. That started in that area, you know, sunk up there. Sure. Do you know one of the reasons that the Titanic sunk the way it did? I mean, there were a lot of factors that went into it. Water. Uh, mostly water. And and the level at which it was at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Too much on the inside. <laughs> Not enough on the outside. Compared to the outside. There was a coal fire burning in the Titanic the entire time the thing was sailing around before it hit the iceberg. And where it hit that iceberg... It was a steamship, wasn't it? Of course there's a coal fire. No, in the coal reserve, in like the coal store. Oh, in the coal store. And it was, and, and I don't think it was like a blazing fire. It was just like a smoldering hot little fire that couldn't get enough oxygen. Yeah. But it just kept going, and they they just couldn't put it out. The only way to put that out would be to dig it out, and to dig it out, it would make a huge fire. So it was, I think, a common thing back then, but it put a lot of um, stress on the Steel. metal part. Yeah. yeah. So when that boat hit that ty- that that iceberg dealio it ripped a big hole in it i mean it might not have had been a big of a hole as it was if it hadn't been stressed out by the fire for days and weeks can you imagine a boat just driving around with a f- gas tanks on fire no <laughs> that's, that, that, that's i mean uh, the nature of a combustion engine but yeah, outside of some, that no. there's some old pictures now they were looking at these old pictures when it was at dock at the side of the boat and they're like yeah i see that spot right there that's where the coal's kept Look at how discolored it is, and look how wavy the metal is. Yeah, that heat will expand and contract and f- stress all that Bad material. Things. And yeah. so, uh, okay, back to Bergen. And tossing catching a, on fire. Talking, <laughs> talking about Bergen and fire. Tossed in a couple Allied bombing raids. Uh, they had those happen to them too. 1955, parts of Bergen burned down. That's that shopping district. Uh, Brygen, I guess it would be B R Y G G E N. Brygen. That's that shopping district burned down again. Yeah, I don't this know. one, they this think, is all in Bergen. Well, yeah, but this one, the Bri- oh. the Briargen one, and and what they think it they were Vikings, you know, that did that one, 1955. All the others were like electrical fires or faulty oh, wiring. Fi- but, uh, what Vikings? What? <laughs> <laughs> in 1955, I would love to think there are Vikings. That's all they had to go on. No, I'm just kidding. But no, parts of the, the shopping district burned down again. I'm gonna blame it on the Vikings. So, Fifteen different fires. Uh, if you're keeping. Oh God. Things are happening. Things Brian. are happening. Kinda. Brian's got his phone blowing up. He tells me every time, make sure your phone's on silent. You're looking at your phone right I now. I want to see where Bergen's at. <sighs> Go so, ahead. I'm listening. I'm, right, I'm, right. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on point. Oh, okay. So, okay, I see where it's at. It's right on the. It's like if you jumped off Bergen, you could hit United Kingdom a little bit. I mean, if you jump yeah. far enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's it's close. on the west side of Norway. So, all right, where okay. were we at? 1950. Uh, 2005 mudslides. Three people die. Terrible. Well, all the trees burned down. <laughs> yeah, I guess I've had to rebuild the city 15 Spring times. of 2006 to summer of 2007, they had 480 mudslides all in Hortelay County. Hortelay. All right, get through all the natural events and disasters here. <laughs> I'm right. done with this. So, Bergen, all right, all right, Bergen. Bergen sounds like a lovely place. <laughs> Bergen's a tinderbox. That's all yeah. you need to know. It's very dry and uh, burns easily. There, If you're keeping count, there's 15 different fires, one occupation, and one boat explosion. Kind of sounds like the va- the California issue they got out there with all the everything's burning and mudslides. and. Well, now, to piggyback onto the fires, average rainfall in Bergen is 89 inches. For reference, Michigan's average rainfall is 31.73 inches. Yeah, they, they got three times the amount of rain we get. They get a lot of rain. So or precipitation. From October 2006 to January 2007, remember I was telling you about all the mudslides? Mm-hmm. It rained for 85 days straight. I don't think I'd like that. No. That's a little depressing. That's Bergen, Norway, y'all. Woo! What We were talking about something else before that. Music! <laughs> oh, yeah. Music. Varg. The, Varg. The wolf. All right. So we got... These guys are doing a Bergen podcast. <laughs> it's all about Bergen. What are they doing? Maybe the people in Bergen will send us uh, some type of information. Oh, hopefully about they the, send about us. the fires. <laughs> hopefully it's not on fire when it gets here. Yeah, we export more fire than anyone. <laughs> it seems like they import it, honestly. All right, so uh, let's talk about Varg and his childhood. Now that we know a little bit about Bergen, that's All how right. he grew up, the Norway, sort of that region of the world. His mom, Len, worked for um, a large oil company, and his dad uh, was an electrical engineer. Okay, what kind of year? What kind of year? Your timestamp? Do we have on that thing? Nineteen seventy-nine. Okay. When he was six years old, the family moved from Baghdad, 
because Varg's dad was working for Saddam Hussein, developing a computer program. Okay, but they are they are Swedish. Norwe- He's Norwegian. Norwegian. You remember Pardon. the name omitted? Yeah. There you go. What? what? He worked for Saddam Hussein, dude. So he can't say his name? Writing secret computer programs. Yeah, no. No? Well, they wouldn't tell me. No shit. Yeah. Like, he's been erased from the annals of history. Pr- yeah. <laughs> <Anal. laughs> all right, let's talk about Varg's schooling. So uh, his parents uh, doing all right. They work in big money with the oil companies, so he obviously he's he, probably doing all right with the family. So he's a, he, he'd be about our age, a couple years older. A couple, years, couple older. years older than us, yeah. His schooling, no. he there were no spots available at the English school in Baghdad, so uh, Varg had to go to an Iraqi elementary school. Okay. And that's where Varg became aware of what they call, quote, racial matters. <laughs> well, he's the only white dude. Well, yep. Corporal punishment wasn't uncommon. Um, there were other children to get to get slapped. But as Varg has a quote here, says, they didn't dare to hit me because I was white. Oh, like reverse racism. Is that reverse racism? Is that a thing? No, that's racism. <laughs> like, oh, reverse? That's just racism. That's just racism. That's where it is. So... Varg's mom mentioned that um, that, that kind of created problems for him because all the other kids were getting smacked around. But and he was mad he wasn't? Well, no. It's just the other kids were like, man, they don't hit the white kid. So. Oh, and that probably didn't work well out right. on the playground. She has no good explanation of how Varg developed his views. Um, Varg said about his mom is that she was very race conscious and that she was afraid that Varg would come home with a black girl. <laughs> All right. Get comfortable with race relations in this one, because that's... I mean, we laugh at it today, but it was a different world. I guess every generation changes a little bit. I think we determined he's like three years older than us. Oh, <laughs> like I six know, years I know, older than but us. I'm thinking about... I mean, boy, yeah. I'm with you. <clears throat> yeah. Varg had a swastika flag at home, and his dad uh, drove his dad nuts. Technically, the word said it drove his dad hysterical. Not funny hysterical, like... like Why didn't European that dude, hysterical. name omitted, go rip the thing down? It's his house. Yeah, no, his dad didn't want people thinking they were Nazis and everything. And then Varg's like, my dad's a hypocrite, though, because he's always complaining, quote, pissed about all the colored people he saw in town. (laughs) He didn't want to put them in an oven. Well, that's (laughs) true enough. I mean, you can be mad at people without wanting to just wipe the race away. 1985, Varg is age 12. Uh, His parents get a divorce. Oh, he had a swastika flag like at age 10 or some shit? Yeah, around then, looking as a kid. I'm taking that. If my, I don't even let my kid put like pin pinholes in the wall of the <laughs> yeah, room, and my the paint in the room. No, get that by little drywall. blue shit, or else I'm taking it down. You know that little sticky little stuff. Varg starts getting into music. He really likes Tchaikovsky in particular, like classical music. Hey, you want a pro tip? By the way, you want yep. a pro tip? Always. All right, you know that little stuff that you use to stick posters on the wall. That little blue stick poster stuff. Poster putty. Poster putty. So if you're ever playing like a a shooter game on, on, on the video games, you can take a little tiny piece of that and then, like, when you're not playing, put, pull your scope up or your aiming weapon dealio and stick it right in the middle of your TV screen. And that's a dot, so you can hip shoot people real easy. Oh, wow. No, that's a great... That's a good pro tip. I'm on, like, a billion different video games. All right, gamers. Uh, he likes Tchaikovsky, but he also likes Megadeth and Slayer. And Iron Maiden was his biggest inspiration. A lot of that heavy metal music is very good music. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's hard to play. Like, it is. Technically, yes. Correct. Yeah. It is It is not just, I mean, blues, rock and roll. It's kind of, like, I know three chords. You want to be in a band? Yup. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. We're just about there. We'll get there. So um, there's claims that Varg was involved in the skinhead scene as an adolescent. I think those claims might be warranted. <laughs> when they asked him, Varg said, quote, there were no skinheads in Bergen. <laughs> until, until I showed up. Now, although he did say he had short hair, admired the Germans, and hated the British and Americans. But not a skinhead. No, no, no can't, can't call a... Uh, 1987, <laughs> age 14, uh, Varg starts playing guitar. So he noodles in his basement for, you know, a couple years. Just about on all right? Yeah, up and down. All right. Yep. If you guys don't know what noodling is, uh, it's just when you sit and the guy just dicks around on the guitar. Up and down your scales, getting your fingers to work and stuff. So 1988 starts his first band, Kalashnikov, with some buddies. Kalashnikov? Yeah, like the rifle. He, he 
I didn't put this down, but he had a thing where it's like it was like when I grew up, all the war movies is like, oh, get the Kalashnikov, you know. And yeah, so AK forty seven. AK forty seven. Yeah. Right. So, all right. A year later, they changed the name to Urukai. Is that Japanese? Urukai is a Lord of the Rings reference. Varg is really big into Lord of the Rings and Middle Earth. <laughs> he loves that stuff, dude. Well, so was uh, wasn't. Zeppelin into that too a little bit. Yeah, they got some Lord yeah. of the Rings stuff in there. So Varg even uses the stage name Count Grishnak, like we were talking about. That's a Lord of the Rings guy. I think it was like the head of the orcs or something. Like I'm that. not. I mean, I seen the movies, right? I mean, I saw them. They all look the same to me. Right. No. And yeah, I mean, he's like one of those guys. Lord of the Rings. Uh, I guess if, you, if you're not a Lord of the Rings person, it's like Game of Thrones or Dungeons and Dragons. He played Dungeons and Dragons. He was a dungeon master. Had a dungeon master guide. I'd like to do. I I I, I want to do it like a, with a board game. I want no computers. I just want to play Dungeons and Dragons. I've yeah. never done it. Yeah. We'll have to develop some characters. Yeah. I might have a 20 sided die somewhere. 1990, age 17, Varg plays guitar for Old Funeral. Old Funeral. I like that name. It's a death metal band from Bergen, Norway. I'm not big into death metal, but I like I like the name. That's funny. They got seven albums. They started in 1988, and uh, they dissolved by 92. So nice 88 to 92 run. That's a pretty good for a band. Uh, one of the first bands to start the Norwegian black metal scene. Which, I think Norwegian black metal is kind of a... It, it, it caught fire. Norwegian black metal. They are bitterly opposed to Christianity, and basically religion as a whole. And uh, they present themselves as militant, misanthrop- misanthropic devil worshippers who want to spread hatred, sorrow, and evil. Well, at least they got a goal. They attack the Church of Satan for being too humane. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> turn, turn up to eleven, baby. <laughs> to wrap it up, they're against compassion, peace, happiness, and fun. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a party in the Norwegian black metal uh, festivals. I think I know some people that are highly qualified to be in this group. <laughs> <laughs> Against fun. You over there. I was just talking about one to you off air before we got here. Yes. <laughs> no, there's a lot of people who fit in the Norwegian black metal uh, huh. emotion. So, 1991, um, Varg starts doing this project called Burzum. B-U-R-Z-U-M. It's a, it's a one-man music project that he starts. And it means darkness in the black speech from the Lord of the Rings. Jeez, this guy's... <laughs> yeah. So he's he's doing a lot of music now, basically. So he's sparked up into the Norwegian black metal scene. In 1992, Varg joins the black metal band Mayhem. Now that one you might have heard of. That's like no. the probably the one of the most popular. No, I'm I'm black still stuck bands. on that on that thing that they're for. What's what was their credo there? They were against happiness and this and that and the other. Yes, they're against happiness. But let me and ask fun. you, <laughs> no fun. Do you think if if they got their way, when everybody was unhappy, you think they'd be happy? Yes, I mean, yes, they would. From what so I read, so they've just it's a it's 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 an, a non attainable goal. Yeah, they're they're going for suffering in life. You like, can't go for negatives because if you achieve your negative, that's a positive. Oh, dude, you can only go for positive, man. Some of these things when I'm writing these stories, I've I will tell you, I've started one so far where I'm like, I'm not finishing this story. This is too dark. These guys get pretty dark, but then there is like this. You're like, man, you guys, you're ne- this is, you're trying to be happy, but you're never gonna be happy doing this. But mm-hmm. they think this is what they're supposed to do, and so. You think it's an act? I mean, I feel like it's a little forced, to be honest. Yeah? We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm I'm interested. I mean. So we got the band Mayhem, okay, and Varg's playing guitar for him. Uh, Mayhem is one of the founders of the Norwegian black metal scene. They put out five studio albums. They had 19 different members over the years. There's now five dudes now, but. I know a couple girls like that. They do. Whoa. They do, they do things on their stage show with, like, animal heads on spikes. They'll go to the butcher and get, like, a pig head and a sheep's head and put it on the spikes on the stage. Ugh. The lead singer would go out and, like, bury his clothes before a show so he'd get that corpsey smell, you know, by the time he went on stage. <laughs> what would you care? Would this he guy cut, in the 15th row can't smell you. No, but for that, he would. This, the, the singer would cut himself with hunting knives and broken glass and stuff to get that, you know, good, good stage effects going. The blood? Yeah. You want to hear? It? <laughs> so, I play darts, by the way. And the other night we were playing. So, you know, there's there's a steel tip darts, one of the little the pokey thingies. Yes. And then there's a soft tip darts. You have a special dartboard for it, but for, they're they're plastic. Right. 
and the nice thing about soft tip darts is most of the dartboards you're playing with automatically score stuff for you. Right. So, you know, for a bunch of guys sitting around in a bar drinking, playing darts, That's you want a computer. But one of the dudes thought he was going to be funny, and he goes up to another guy and he throws a dart at him. Kind of hits him in the butt, you know, it doesn't hurt him. I mean, these are just pieces of plastic. That guy, he felt it, and he kind of got like, mad about it. This is just on Tuesday. He picks the dart back up, and he throws it at the original guy that threw it. Uh. And it hits him oh. in a vein. Oh, no. Not in an artery, in a vein. Oh, okay. And it okay. was right on the wrist Jeez. where an artery would squirt. This thing was dripping out like a, like a faucet on a slow drip. Not, a, not, not like a little squirt, not high pressure, but high volume. It was the, the, the floor was bloody everywhere, and he's holding his arm. It's just bleeding all over the big trail of blood into the bathroom. Here we had this little hometown, tiny little in in Goodrich, and it bloods <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, huh, Dart League got weird. <laughs> Dart League got real weird. Dart League just got medieval. Yeah, so I don't think he was doing that for effect, though. He wasn't. <laughs> we didn't throw darts at Doug on purpose. Sorry, but I, Doug. But I had the same weight. Because don't a lot of these guys, didn't Sid Vicious carve some shit into his chest, too? Yep, sure did. I don't like that. It's a European thing, man. They get medieval. I don't like it. Yeah. I don't, that's just, that's, I guess... Are they looking for attention or whatever? All right. Everybody... So they're cutting themselves with dot <laughs> bottles and shit. As was as was explained to me, because I will, I'll, I'll be a, I'm a Joe Rogan follower. I do like, I try and do self help and improvement. Who's Joe Rogan? What's a Joe Rogan? What's a Joe? Uh, about four or five feet. No, I'm kidding. He's taller than that. Um, no offense, Joe. Love you. He's always trying these philosophies for like, but it really boils down to life. Everyone, honestly, the guy who's robbing you, the people who are killing other people, it sounds so stupid, but they're literally just trying to be happy. Like that's everyone's basic goal is to be happy. Now, I'm happy. Right. <laughs> like thinking like, you know what? Burning down this church is going to make me happy. That's not the, the correct thought, but the person's like, I'm just trying to be happy. And so, you know, just know yeah. that when you see people in the world, even though they're assholes, they're, even though they're doing things that are wrong and hurtful to you, in their mind of minds, I believe they're just trying to be happy. Even if they're broken. And they're, they're, they maybe they're broken. So. All right. All right. Yeah, uh, let what's me get the... another beer. Hold on. I'm seven up. <laughs> you have to go, go? No, I, go. no I, I'm Randy? just kidding. All right. <laughs> Speaking on making me happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's the most popular pastime in Bergen? Curling. No. Yes. No. Wrong. What's happened the most in Bergen that I've told you so far? Lighting, curling, places up on fire. Okay, good. <laughs> August 21st, 1992, Varg burns down Homakin, uh, Homakolin Chapel in Oslo, built in 1903. Oh, he just, he burned it down. Burned it down. Okay. Yeah. September 13th, 1992. Well, did he get caught for it and get in trouble and stuff? We'll, we'll get there. Oh, okay. September 13th, 1992, Varg burns down... Stold Church in Vindefjord, built in 1887. Oh, that's sad. That is sad. Did I mention who was in uh, Mayhem with Varg, a.k.a. Count Grishnach? No. I didn't. Okay. Not. I mean, not if, if he did, I didn't recognize him. I don't All right. Uh, well, let's just go through the lineup real quick. You got a lead vocal guy named Attila Sischer. A- 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 Attila? Attila. That's his actual name. He's Hungarian. Oh, okay. They call him Void sometimes. Void. They're all gonna have superhero names, dude. Just gotta, you just gotta get used to it. <laughs> On guitar, we got Oystein Arseth. That sounds about right. You call him Euronymous. Euronymous. Yeah, Euronymous. <laughs> all right, I like that one better than. Oh, good. Remember yeah. him. Euronymous. Uh, on the rhythm guitar and the bass, you got Schnorr W. Ruck. Isn't <laughs> they call him Blackthorn. Still like your anonymous best. Right. That's yeah, keep an eye on him. And on the drums, Jan Axel Blomberg. Jan Axel's his real name? Yep, Jan probably Jan Jan Axel. Jan Axel. Jan Axel Blomberg. Yeah. Uh they call him Hellhammer. That seems forced. I, I play the drums forever. Do not call me Hellhammer. <laughs> <laughs> I was actually made fun of because I didn't hit the drums hard enough. You're anonymous. You're anonymous. I'm glad you remember that one because that'll come back around. <laughs> December 24th, 1992, Christmas Eve, the Assane Church in Bergen. Uh, Yarg burned it down. On Christmas Eve. Yeah, built in 1795. Weren't there people in it? I did not say. Not for long. <laughs> if there were. They, they went running out real quick. I'm just saying, if you're burning down a church or any building and there's a group of people there, Having mass or whatever, midnight mass, and you would think on Christmas Eve. Yeah. So, well, uh, and they'd be like, "What's that guy over there doing with a gas can?" 
why has he got a torch? I don't know. Maybe they didn't do that. Getting I don't know. It's warm in here. Man, there's a lot of people. <laughs> it's so warm in here. Huh. Well, that is, that is midnight mass at church. Uh, Varg also got charged with burning down the Phantom Stave Church in Bergen, but the jury found him not guilty of that one. This guy was just running around, burned down churches. Varg, quote, on church burnings, <clears throat> I'm not going to say that I burnt any churches, but let me put it this way. There was one person who started it. I was found not guilty of burning the Phantom Stave Church. But anyway, that's what triggered the whole thing. That was the 6th of June, and everybody linked it to Satanism. What everyone overlooked was that on June 6, 793, in Linsterfam in Britain, that was the site of the first known Viking raid in history, with Vikings from Hordaland, which is my country. They, the Christians, desecrated our graves, our burial mounds, so it's revenge. <laughs> All right, I got a reason, man, I guess. Just Dude, trying to be yeah. happy. It was a 1,200-year-old reason, though. <laughs> like, hey, you know, way back when. Yeah, well, the Christians and the Muslims are still fighting, so whatever. Touche. All right. January 1993, black metal in Norway is brought into the spotlight. See, this is what you were talking about. Uh, so one of the biggest newspapers, Bergen Tidedid, is... Uh, they put a huge anonymous interview with Count Grishnak out there, and where Count Grishnak claims to have burnt the churches, and he even killed the guy in Lillehammer, according to the anonymous According to the, the, right. the, yeah. He, right. Did he kill a guy? Well, 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 well. He claimed he did under an, uh, like, Under assumed name. Yeah. Right. They claim to be devil worshippers, and quote, our intention is to spread fear and devilry. And devilry. Devilry. All the right. article was published in the front page with the headline, quote, we lit the fires. It who had a who started of, the fire? Uh, yeah, they took a little Billy Joel jab right there, didn't they? <laughs> what year so, was that? Uh, that was 1993. Yeah, I mean, that song right was there. back in 90, 90, 89? Close to, God, I couldn't tell you. Yeah, well, I remember singing it in eighth grade. They blew it, though, because on the cover of the article, they had a picture of Varg holding two big knives. They should have had him with, like, a match or a lighter or something. Well, yeah, maybe one, it was a flint and a stone. Yep. So Varg is arrested and questioned, but released for lack of evidence. Well, I mean, he admitted to it, kind of through the article. Yeah, but then Varg later said it was a publicity evidence. stunt. We yeah. were pulling that guy's leg. We exaggerated. It's like he, <laughs> he printed the article without telling us or fact-checking it, man. We're, so. we're trying to get a band off the ground here. It we're going to say a lot of weird things. Yeah, right. Okay, so August 10th, 1993, Varg and Black Fo- <clears throat> Start again here. You know what? What? Let's take a break. Do you want to take a break? This is a good time to take a break. All right, we're we got some break music here. I gotta dance dance my way out the studio. So I'm still wondering why we don't have like this music coming back in. I've been listening. I like to hear it when I bumper bumper music. It is bumper music. Oh, and we got some sponsors. Get to listen to spot. Uh, yeah, cool. Do your use your things to do stuff. (laughs) Take your money and go do things that we say. You've been listening to tales of music superstars, but at Intrigue Escape Games in Mount Pleasant, Michigan, you live the rock star adventure. The Save the Concert Escape Room at Intrigue Escape Games is Michigan's first rock star themed escape room. You and your friends have 60 minutes to be the heroes, live the adventure, and save the concert. Book your game now at IntrigueEscapeGames.com. IntrigueEscapeGames.com. You're right. We got to start doing the bumper music yeah. to get back in. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed those um, awesome messages. Yeah, we had to make some money right there. We're making tons of money from those commercials too, Rolling right? Rolling in it. Rolling. I hey. make it rain constantly. <laughs> I thought you you said your wife makes it rain. My wife no, makes she it makes it snow. snow. She's, yeah. a, she's the witch. I'm married to Elsa, basically. She's, she's a teacher and she's prayed for like six snow days and she's got, got them all. She's got them all. Hey, I just want to say real quick. So, okay. We've been talking about this region up there in Europe, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Norway, whatever. Norway. In my mind. Oh, Scandinavia. The Scandinavian countries. In my mind, they all run together. Really, they do. And I and and I just kind of want to say, okay, so above like. Ben's intently got his phone out. I got out. a phone uh, with a little map. I need, <laughs> I, need visu- I need visuals. So everybody's aware where like the, you know, the, the United Kingdom's at and the British and the Irelands are there on that little island. 
So then there's kind of like the mainland where you have Germany and Poland and and the Netherlands and Belgium and France and Spain are kind of up underneath all that. Well, then there's the Baltic Sea. And above that, and this is where I always get in my, I can't, I can't remember this, the way it go. I, we had to learn it for like tests and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'd always get these wrong. I could remember everything else, but like, so there's like three fingers that con- kind of come down from the north, three different countries. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's Norway, Sweden, Finland, in that order, going from left to right. So and we're talking stuff. about Norway. So they're they're right in the like Norwegian Sea slash Atlantic up there in the north. And then they border. I have a huge border That's with enough. Sweden. Sweden, Norway, Finland. Yeah. Okay. And then and then there's the Gulf of but 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 they're not gonna be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and then there and then there's Finland on the other side and the other side of Finland's Russia. Okay. So yeah, I just had to look at that because um, we we were talking about all these places getting burned down, and Brian saying, "Well, the the Vikings are coming in and doing it. It's because they're on the water. They're on like the very the accessible ocean. by sea, right?" And to just, I want to make sure everybody understands, I'm not like some sort of American that doesn't know anything. I, well, no way. Hold on, I'm exactly that. But. <laughs> But don't take offense because I don't know a lot about America either. <laughs> That's true. Vermont, New Hampshire. I've been there. I don't really know which one's which. I have no idea. They're like know. this, right? There was one there. If you had to give me two guesses, I could guess them. We need people in Vermont to listen. So if you know anyone, yeah. pass well, them an episode. And I love you know me in Vermont. I'm in like infatuated with you that are. State. He's a fan of Vermont very yeah, much so because right. of the show Newhart. They but he were, knows nothing about it. I know a little about it. The Green Mountain Boys. I'm Larry. Um, this is my brother Daryl. This is my other brother Daryl. But then there's a couple other ones there by Washington D.C., New Hampshire, Rhode Island. Oh, Rhode Island, Delaware, Connecticut. Delaware. There's one I don't know. I don't much know. About I could all. maybe get Mass- Massachusetts. Yeah. More like Taxachusetts. <laughs> Excellent healthcare, I hear. <laughs> all right. I hope Ted Kennedy's listening. Well, let's hope Ted wants to know more about Norwegian black metal and Varg Vagnensis. Vag. Vag. <clears throat> so, August 10th, 1993, Varg and Blackthorn drive to Euronymous's apartment in Toyen Street in Oslo. Euronymous is their bass guitar player. No. Rhythm guitar player. I thought he was the lead singer. He's in the band. He's definitely in the band. Yeah, he's on guitar. You're correct. <laughs> okay. He does. He, he's got a guitar. You're and guitar it, players sticking together. Well, no, I just like the name Euronymous. That's, All right. That's a good name. Well, uh, Varg and Blackthorn go to his apartment. Shortly after arriving, Varg, and I'm just going to refer to him as Euro, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay. So shortly after you're arriving, Varg and Euro get into a confrontation. Dun, dun, dun. Varg fatally stabs Euro. Wow. Okay, he's gone. His body was found uh, on the stairs outside the apartment with... 23 cut wounds. Got a little stabby stabby on him. Two to the head, five to the neck, and 16 to the back. Oh, stabbed him in the back. Some thought it was about a power struggle. At uh, two. Or a financial dispute over the Burzum records. Or an attempt to outdo an earlier stabbing in Lillehammer. Outdo so, one? Like, I'm going to do better this like, time? Hey, kill the guy in Lillehammer. Yeah, right. It's like, this one was way worse. So, Well, do you think... Varg denied all of those rumors, though. Do you think they just did it to, say, promote them... Selves and the guy was. I mean, they're all into death and hate and they have, sadness. They have stories. Hey, you like want to stab man. me a hundred times? It'd be great. Woo! Yeah. Okay. There's there's some there's some bad things that happen in Norwegian death metal, and we'll definitely get there. But uh, all right, I'll give you Varg's version. Uh, Varg Varg claims self defense. He said that Euro had plotted to stun him with an electro shock weapon, tie him up, and torture him to death while videotaping it. That was Euro's plan for Varg. Well, said. I mean, that would be right in their, 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 the seam of what they want to do. So he said Euro planned a, a meeting of something about unsigned contracts to ambush Varg. And uh, Blackthorn was outside smoking, right? So Varg goes up to the fourth floor alone. Euro meets Varg at the door, um, handed Varg the contract. But when Varg stepped forward and confronted Euro, Euro panicked. And he kicked Varg in the chest, like 300 style. Like Sparta, boom! <laughs> so they get into a struggle. I would pull a hammy for sure. Well, yeah, well, right, but they they struggling, they're fighting around, and then Varg stabbed Euro to death. And yeah, a lot of stabbings. Varg's quote about it was, uh, "quote I hit him directly in the skull. His eyes went boing, and he was dead." And then he continued to stab him fifteen more times. 
The, probably. If you're going to do a job, do, do it, it right. right. Blackthorne had a quote about the murder. He quote, I was neither for nor against it. I didn't give a shit about oystein. <laughs> this is one hell of a band. <laughs> Stick together, fellas. Band well, of brothers. It's, they put Oasis to shame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? You guys thought you had problems. <laughs> 19 different guys Bobby went through mayhem. Bobby loves me more. And, uh, yeah, well. <laughs> Here's a knife to the head, bitch. <laughs> right, let me stab you in the back 16 times. Literally. Uh, August 19th, 1993, Varg is arrested in Bergen. Okay. The police find 150 uh, kilograms of explosives. That's about 330 pounds. Oh, and f- uh, wow. Over 3,000 rounds of ammunition at his house. Some See, speculate Varg was going to blow up the radical leftist communist socialist youth community, the Blitz House. They're a bunch of anti-fascists. He's, but I don't know. Varg I can't didn't. even keep all this shit straight today. Varg I don't deny that stuff. He said, quote. He was going to blow up the communist building? Well, they're leftist communist socialist youth community. They're called Blitz House. That all was right. like a Norwegian anti-fascist group. All right. So this guy's got a ma- MAGA hat on. A little. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> Do not go chant in his face. I would not recommend that. Don't play your drum two inches from his mouth. He's he's not going to respond well. Uh, Varg said, quote, I was getting the explosives and the ammo uh, in order to defend Norway if we were attacked any time. <laughs> during the Cold War, <laughs> during the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union could have decided to attack us. We have no reason to trust either government, the royal family, or the military. I know a dude. I know I know people that, that, that they got shit right now. You know some Vargs? They, they are they prepared would. to defend the United States against foreign or domestic threats. I'm gonna grab my small soap, the bar, the where the, you know you get your bar of soap, the box that that came in with my tiny soap box, and it's just every time I see like super ammoed up people or people who are super gun toting people shooting guns is fun. I shoot guns. I've got guns. I get that. But when you're trying to build your own military, it's like, how insecure do you feel walking around all day, man? Like, see, but how I, scared are you? For real? Like, are you really that freaked that you need that big an arsenal? Are you that kind of, like, you got that big of fears those, in your head? But what do those people want? Just to be happy. They want to, no, they want to be seen. Well, they want to be secure, too, I suppose. Like, like, I say you know, let them go. Safety and security and Because the, the people that I know, anyways, right. that do this shit. I'm not, I don't have that energy. I don't have that. No. I don't have that enthusiasm anymore. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. <clears throat> I'm not fired up about that. This doesn't get but, me going. But they're not, they are They are just not the people going out and committing crimes. They're not. No, I don't, wouldn't they imagine might, they would. They might not like a lot of people and they might not like a lot of government and this, that, and the other, but they're not taking up arms to be offensive. They're, they're more of a defensive group. I just couldn't, I just. Don't feel like I'd live my day with that much fear I, all day. I would just drive me. I'd be like, man, I'm, how scared are I, I you? Like, just I don't like get being it. in the dark. I don't know. Yeah, right. I mean, yeah. whatever. Anyway, that's what I hear about. Anytime these people are milit, so I'm like, Varg, like, what are you? You're really worried about that? I have guns really- to where if the military or if bad people take over. I'm not gonna go fight them. I'm gonna go to like if I gotta go kill some food or something. Yeah, that's why that's I have why guns, I got guns. Right, yeah, for shooting. <laughs> I mean, I guess I'll shoot somebody if I got to. But wow. I don't want to do that. Uh, I didn't no. even like seeing that guy get hit with a dart. No. <laughs> I can't handle somebody with a puncture, a bullet wound <laughs> through the chest. I like combat sports, but that's not, yeah, bullet violence. I'd probably, violence, m- I'd probably miss anyways. So, all right. Uh, back so, to Varg. He's arrested. He's arrested. They found, like, bomb shit in his house. Yeah, on top, on top of stabbing a dude, they found a bunch of bombs. There's and not good excuses like, for having bomb shit in your house. Typically, no. The bullets, whatever bullets. You can have bullets. Yeah, bullets. But uh, maybe in maybe in whatever Scandinavian country they're in, Norway here. You you can't have maybe that's a rule, but but they always arrest people in like the United States and they're like, well, we had all these guns and all these bullets. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. we all do. <laughs> yeah. We're yeah, we are Americans here. That's <laughs> kind of how it started. We got a lot of guns and bullets. May sixteenth, nineteen ninety four. Varg is sentenced to twenty one years in prison. Norway's maximum penalty for murder. Okay, tangent. Where's that seed and vault at? What are we talking about? The end of the world shit, the seed vault. Oh, the seed vault. The seed, they got, they, they store I seeds in there. I feel like it's in Norway towards the top of the Arctic Circle. 
All right, if anybody knows where the seed vault is Spets, being kept at. Spets von whatever vault or something yeah, like that. Yeah, they got all the seeds in case there's like, oh, they uh, we do something dumb or something happens where seeds we Seeds for growing food. Yeah, seeds for plants. growing uh, plants and trees and food. Human and beings need plants, like f- flora. No, cows need plants. Human beings need cows. True. All right, I want to eat a steak tonight. I'm a vegetarian. Uh, my, my cow ate a bunch of grass. I'm a vegetarian by proxy. Right. Everything I eat eats nothing but fruits and vegetables. Seed vault. <laughs> Seed vault. Svans Garden, Norway or something like that? Might be Switzerland, man. I, no, it's not Switzerland. See? I'm telling you. you. Get them all mixed up, man. I'm it could sorry. be in Denmark. I'm I don't sorry, know. guys. To the two listeners I know we have in Norway, if you would just send us a thing on, on Twitter or something, let us know what's, but, where but the hey, Seed vault is. But hey, we're spreading information. So, I said some words sure. that I think help people learn about different things. I think so. Here, yeah, me, I did. I learned things. I'm going to teach you about one Norway more thing. Sweden this is, this, and Sweden. We're going to learn now about Norway's legal system because, uh, as I said, VAR got 21 years, which is Norway's maximum penalty. For I guess anything, when you learn <laughs> twenty-one years, you get it. Uh, he was uh, he got convicted of murder of your anonymous, the three church arsons, the one attempted arson, uh, the theft and storage of the explosive. So apparently he stole the explosive material. No. So and then he goes to jail. I guess they didn't buy it at Walmart. Now May also nineteen ninety four Oslo. Uh, well no also also, <laughs> also very May close also. spelling, one consonant different. Have I told you about the importance of a consonant movement every day? <laughs> or uh, I mean, you, you got it. Well, you got to have a vowel movement because if not, you get consonated. <laughs> you, you want oh ha? Where's Why? our where's our where's our uh, rim shot? Ding. It was worth all of that. <laughs> that was you got a vowel movement. Oh, you get consonated. old man, dad jokes. <sighs> so funny. <laughs> so also in May 1994, Mayhem, the they release. The Mysteries de Santanas album. It's in Norwegian, so I don't know if it's mm. right. So it mm. probably sounds like the mysteries of the guy named Don Santana. Uh, but it's weird because it has your anonymous on guitar and Varg on the bass. Oh. <laughs> I bet that played well into their crowd, though. Euro's family asked them to take Varg out and redo the bass parts. What they? What he say? Hellhammer, who was in charge of this, with the drummers like. Yeah, I'll do it. So he said he was going to put a posting up to get someone to come in and play the new parts. He never did. He's like, I thought it was, oh, I didn't write the quote down. He's like, I thought it was something like poetic or, or something like that to have them both on the same album. All right. So. And, and, and it sells well. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Zar, uh, Zarg. Varg serves his time at four different prisons of Bergen. He did serve, How he, did he serve all 21? We'll get there. All right. Tonsberg is one prison. Ringsteig is another prison. The Trondheim and the Tromso. And he did them all. What was that band that had that 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 um kind of fire starter? Vangstar uh, Rick uh, No, fire starter is by Prodigy cuz I wanted to get that Was it Prodigy? I, I wanted that beat every time I am the fire starter. Yeah, that <laughs> was fire starter. Where are they from? Is um, there Germans? I do not know. Man. Maybe they were a, maybe that's their fault for burning that town down all the time. No, I'd still blame Billy Joel, even though he claims he's innocent. <laughs> Late nineteen ninety four, Varg writes a book called Varg Small. Or Varg Varg Speech is how it's translated. Uh, he wrote it to defend himself against all the media lies. Well, he said things that were pretty inflammatory, like, "Hey, I'm a I'm I, I want every all the Christian stuff to go away and die." And I want to spread mayhem and unhappiness. Correct. And... I, I didn't want to get into all that, but he was very clear that he was not a Satanist. Um, that we'll That's because we'll, we'll that wasn't extreme enough for him. <laughs> right, right. Fuck he's not a Satanist. Pussies. He's like, he's a pagan. He wants to bring back the old gods and all these things. Like, he, that's what he, he writes all these. Well, we're just about there. So, so I'm going to tell this story real quick. So we are in fifth or sixth grade. I was there. Yeah, and we had to do whatever a, the story is. I was we there. had to do a uh, for like religion class or something a coat of arms for our you know we had to like draw mm-hmm. a little shield mm-hmm. that represented our family and there were like symbols on there that yep. made and so my coat of arms had like quadrants you know like one two three and four quadrants I had little pictures of like I don't know a deer or whatever and a car I, whatever but between the quadrants I had like margins like a cross okay. And in the cross, I wrote, and okay, we went to a Catholic school. Is the family motto you're going to come up with now? I, I had 
pagan wrote in there this way, like going down. Oh no! And then like a crossword puzzle going across, and so it shared like the middle letter or something pagan. And all my knowledge of what a pagan was back then was that uh, that uh, Tom Hanks movie. <laughs> People against, uh, yes. people against goodness and normalcy people with their against, goat skin g- pants. Yeah, that was my – that's because that movie was a thing back then. And so I was like, people against good – so my teacher calls me into the back room. My parents get called and like, who's teaching this kid to be a pagan? Seriously. Tom Hanks, Dragnet. <laughs> yeah, it was Dragnet. Tom Hanks, was it Leslie Niels? No, that Dance was – Dance around in a goat skin pants. <laughs> that was people against goodness and normalcy. That's what you know of pagans. That's, that was all my knowledge of pagans. That's right Varg, man. I mean, that's he wanted to make sure people oh, were a Tom going Hanks movie. back to the old. What? 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 Wasn't me. It was Tom I, Hanks. That guy. He tried to kill me with a taser. Right. Your uh, phone is blowing the f up, dude. It's Valentine's Day. People love me. <laughs> Not to time date the show. I'm sorry, guys. It is Valentine's Day. Happy you, Valentine's Day. Did you get your wife anything? Uh, yeah, actually, I did. Oh. I, was on, I gotta go get my wife. I was on the group on like a month ago. 2019, man. I'm really trying to stay on it. I really am. It's a fucking pain in the ass. But failing or succeeding? No, I'm kind of on it right now. I mean, I, my house blew up a couple things, guys, with some DIY stuff. Had a burst boiler pipe one day, and uh, I got that all fixed up. But it's just like you know, the, I'm trying to stay. On, it's hard adulting. I'll just say that adulting is hard. Like Ryan just pulled the tricep, pull, patting himself on the back. Uh, everybody, no, not even the repair's not even done all the I way. I fixed my house. What the hell? I bought a hundred year old house. I can't believe it broke. That I really didn't think about that. <laughs> All right, Varg. Here we go. Late 1994, Varg writes a book. We talked about Varg speech, right? Okay. He also, during his prison time, he releases two Burzum albums. Now it's all during his prison time. Yeah. Okay. Well, now the other thing is the Norwegian prison. Varg had a quote which I didn't pull because I couldn't find it wherever it was in like 16 friggin' articles. Um, Norwegian prisons. He equated them to more of a college dormitory. He's like, you know, I had TVs and desks, and like, there's like a place you cook some food and like go down to the hall. And I, I do think know, they like, got to step up on us in some countries with education. the reform part of being in prison. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it may seem anti-intuitive to let prisoners have like a certain standard of living, but the the the, the some of those countries over there, including Norway, I think they've shown us like treat these people like human beings, let them better themselves, and when they get out of prison, maybe they won't come back. They'll have the tools they need to be a thing, you know, a better thing. Exactly. So what I don't they, know if it worked for Varg, but they, let's find out. <laughs> what they do with Varg is they won't give him guitars and, like, guitar strings and stuff. So he's only got synthesizers to uh, make his music. So it's very, like, ambient neo-folk music. You know, neo-folk? Ne- neo. You know. Can I look that up on Google? Neo. Google, play some nice neo-folk music. <laughs> I, that's what he called it. I don't know. That's what he gave him to work with. So that's what he got. He's no. He's not screaming in the death metal now. It's just more like elevator. They gave him a theremin. You know? <laughs> <laughs> they might. I, no, that seems like that's. That seems too pointy. All right, from yeah. 1998 to 2004. Star Trek reference. Go ahead. Varg wrote five books. He wrote books. Yep. The Teutonic mythology and worldview. Uh, the religion and blood. Theories. <laughs> That's the name of his book? I got some theories. <laughs> I want to I write that book. You know people get that wrong all the time. What you actually have is a hypothesis. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay, also That's... in the, the last book, The Cult of Hell, if you really want to know, get open an incognito window and go to burzum.org for more uh, writings. And oh, things. incognito window? Dude. Black like, web, huh? He's like a white nationalist type guy, man. I don't want that in my cash. Yeah. There's no way. There's some dudes going to knock on your door. Yeah, right. I'm on a list already. I've yeah. set explosives into a microphone like four <laughs> times. Can't say bomb on a plane. <laughs> bomb, 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 bomb. 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 What if I was a bombardier? <laughs> okay. Uh, October 26th, 2003, after being granted a short leave. Uh, I don't know how, like Canada, when snow left to go record in New York. I don't know. See ya. I'll be back. Okay. You, do you promise to come back? <laughs> I promise. Absolute, I will come back. Absolutely, I do. Var goes on the run. <laughs> we lost another one, Bob. <laughs> Damn it. What'd you do? Well, I said, I told him to come back. He said he was gonna. And then he did it. I told you to stop doing that. I know, after thir- the, the, like the 30th one this month, man. You're just too trusting. <laughs> I want to believe people. We're here to give them a second chance. He just wants know? to be happy. 
Uh, the, the rumor was Varg received some death threats from the inside, so... Uh, he carjacks a family of three in Noomdel at gunpoint. Oh, he just picks up... He <laughs> finds a gun? <laughs> Time to go, man. I didn't think these countries had guns anymore. They got rid of them all. Ran well, them over the steamrollers. I guess. I, well, I guess not, because Varg found one and... He got a gun. Jacked a family. So, do you think it was like one of these situations where he's like, "I got a gun." And he's just got his, <laughs> his finger, finger in his coat pocket. Out. Here, she. I got a gun. She. <laughs> I don't think he had a long. He probably found a long rifle. Honestly, imagine getting carjacked by rifle. Well, dude, <laughs> rifles just... are rough. No, I'm no. But if you get close enough, that's a big barrel to snatch out your hand. I mean, yeah, I but know. you could hit somebody with that, like, like poke them with it. I think. As we say at the gym, bullets travel in straight lines. No, they don't. Well, no, it's more of a drifted sort of descent. They have a trajectory. Like like an arc. It's a trajectory. Yeah. About 19 hours later, police arrest Varg in Romreich. That's about 93 miles from where he was. He had knives, gas mask, camo, GPS, maps, laptop, and a phone. This mother son of a bitch got, he got armed quick. Well, he sounded like he hit up one of, your, one of his prepper buddies. Yeah, <laughs> he probably like, had a network. Right. So uh, he gets 13 months added on to his sentence. Hey, hey, yo, I need a go bag. All right. <laughs> Stop by. You know where it's Gotta at. Gotta go back. Yeah. Go to the tree, dig it up. March 2009, after serving 15 years of a 21-year sentence, Varg is paroled. Oh, he got he got out, and they caught him again, and he got paroled without even, even getting to 21. Nope. I, they gave him an extra year and a month for that uh, run in the carjacking, and then he, he got out after 15 years. Hmm. So after his release, Varg puts out three more black metal albums. Um, he writes on the Burzum site, and he owns like that. He owns his blog called the Thulian Perspective, which I got partway through some research, and I'm like, shit, this is his blog about himself. I'm like, this is all biased. So I threw that out. <laughs> I'm like, because he's, he's coming. I'm like, man, this guy, this writer really likes him coming off right. And I just caught the web address. I'm like, damn it. So July 16th, 2013, Varg and his French national national wife. Uh, are arrested in France on suspicion of planning acts of terrorism. She went out and bought four rifles. Well, there's only two of them. Well, yeah, it's two. One for each hand. <clears throat> I, suppose, I, wonder what, right? I wonder what kind of rifles they say. Yeah, they do not say. Uh, she turns out she had a permit, though. Well, they got a permit. They released him without charge. Yeah. So instead, they charged him with inciting racial hatred towards Jews and Muslims. Well, on what grounds? Uh, probably his blog. <laughs> July 8th, 2014, Varg is convicted, convicted of inciting racial hatred and sentenced to six months probation uh, and a fine of about $8,000. I don't know what the other symbol is, but it translated really well to... Oh, French, francs. So 8,000 francs is about 8,000 bucks. So in six months probo. Oh, that's not too... They got, they got off on that one. June 2018, Varg literally says, bye-bye. To the Burzum site on YouTube. He's like, project's done. I'm done doing that. So he's like 45, 46 right now? Roundabout, yeah. Yeah. So, and a final quote from Varg. <clears throat> quote, killing a person with a 8 centimeter long blunt knife is a bloody affair. Especially if you keep doing, stabbing them and stuff. Right. Even though once they're dead and their heart stops pumping, I don't think there's a lot of blood coming out the last couple stab wounds. But it's all got to drain, though. I mean, like, you know, mm, you string that, up a deer, you drain a hog or whatever. It, it doesn't happen instantly. But, I mean, Cause if, the pr- if it's we, not pumping and you just stab somebody in the back, there's not a lot of... No, the back get them, pressure, right. Yeah, like you got to get them in a, in, a, in a hose, man. Vein pressure is, like, what, like six pounds? It's not a lot. It ain't even that out length. But no, whatever, you're, once when they're pumping, but when they're done pumping, they're... And it's, it, it's probably bloody for the first <laughs> five or six stab wounds. It's a bloody affair. And then you're just doing it to go through the... You're just doing it for fun. Right. Uh, right now, the the last bit I'll leave you with is um, Louis Cachet, if you remember from the opener. Yeah. That's his legal name, just for documents, because every time he puts down Varg, Varg, and and people are like, hey, you're the guy who fucking did the thing. And so he lives in Limousine, France, with his wife, and he had seven kids. Huh. So... Closing the door on the wolf. I don't think he was a poser. No, I wouldn't say he was a poser. I would say that he had some issues <laughs> growing up that sort of swayed his decision-making process when it comes to nationalities and racial issues and things like that. And, and at then, a young age, maybe he got he got like caught up in the net of 
of an ideal of an idea uh, in 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 a group of people, and that's right. all they pray on all of our young folks, whatever group they're getting into. I'm saying like neo Nazis or 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 gang, you know, the Bloods and the Crips or the okay. or, or or whatever gang you might fall into. I bet you they got they they fell into it at an early impressionable age. It sounds like very much adolescence they were exposed to some. And they, alternate thoughts, I guess, or whatever, they, some fucked up shit. And, I don't know what to tell And you. probably over there, because yeah. of their history and the wars and the Nazis and stuff, it's a little different than we have over here For with sure. some of our... For sure. With some of our gang violence and some of our young Absolutely. kids. But he's... So he's growing up in a, a like a neo-Nazi sort of, of, of like, rage against the machine. Not rage, not rage, but, you know, against the system. Right. R- uh, fight back. You and know, he, stand and up, he, oppose. He, he did it for a long time. But then, like a lot of them, they grow out of it. I, Maybe that's where he's at now. You're talking about it, and now all the information sort of coalesced in my head, and it, it was. He was just a guy to say, why are we doing it your way? What about this way? You know, like, oh, you want to do it that way? Yeah, but I don't want to do it that way. You know, like, yeah. he was just a contrarian sort of type of guy. He was just like, yeah, but what about this? You know, like one of those dudes who but were, now, was always the opposite of whatever you said. He was going to be like... Yeah, but I want that. I want the opposite of that. How how you like that? You know, just try and confront and sort of challenge people. Yeah, now he's now he's Took hanging it. out in limousine France with his wife and hairy armpits and six kids. Ugh. Yeah. No hairy armpits. I bet they I think the French have that, don't they? I think it's freedom. That the whole yeah. I don't I, I just think it's freedom, it's freedom, yeah, freedom. it's probably coming back around. Might be. Well, that wraps it up another one when we start talking about Harry Armpits of France. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd like to comment on Harry Armpits of France, please check out our speak pipe. Oh, hit us up on the speak pipe, guys. Again, I took off the restrictions, man. There's no email required. There's no name required. I mean, do what you want to do, and let's just hear from you, and that's what I got to say. All right, we'll talk to everybody here in a couple more weeks. Hit us up on socials, like you said, Twitter, Facebook, and the gram. Hit the speak pipe at crimeandmusic.com. Let us know you're listening out there. We're still trying to get Wyoming and Nebraska. Are we really? Yes. I don't know why. Wyoming, Nebraska. Nobody lives there, Brian. That could be. If you live in there or know somebody who does, just give us proof of life, and uh, we'll stop asking. If you live next door to Wyoming, just go over, just take one step into the state line, hit the download button, and get right back in. That's then all we get, need. Then we get our thing. That's all we need. All right. I don't want to go to Wyoming or Nebraska. Do yeah. You want to go? No. no, I'll go to Wyoming. Oh, okay. Well, Ben will go to Wyoming. Go to patreon.com slash crime and music if you'd like to help fund that or any other. Keep these episodes going. We've been rolling our wrong. It's fun. I love it. Uh, also, if you're on Alexa and Echo, hey, thanks, guys. I, I see a couple of downloads there. We're on the Alexas and stuff. The Alexas. It's neat. Down Easter Alexa. Yeah. Second Billy Joel reference. <laughs> I didn't even get that. So <laughs> if you do, let us know. And uh, outside of that, like the song says, never. Oh, we're not recording. And since we had some weird technical glitch right there, which you may or may not notice. Which is to be done now. It's time to go, dude. I'm going to bail. Like the song says, never trust a big butt and a smile. Who shot who in the what now?